Hello, and welcome to the course. This is the introduction section. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little about me. All throughout high school and college, I had aspirations of becoming a college professor. I imagined myself in a tweed jacket and loafers lecturing about the beatniks and their impact on modern literature. Yet one thing led to another, and I took a hard right away from liberal arts and into the world of information technology. I started my career in IT in late 2006 with a focus in networking. Over the years, I've worn many hats. I've worked in operations, engineering, and architecture. I've worked for enterprises and for internet service providers. My first foray into the world of coding was in 2014, leveraging VB scripts to perform audits and then assist with change management. Seeing how much reward one could yield from a thought exercise and a few lines of code, I asked a few of my colleagues who had been writing code for years which language I should learn. The response was always Python. Many books, tutorials, and weeks of practice later, I was solving real-world problems in a production environment with Python. Python is a great language, but it was written in the 80s and released as version 0.9.0 .0 in 1991. Multi-core processing would not become a reality until 2001. And while Python can achieve concurrency and parallelism, it is somewhat constrained by the global interpreter lock. To be fair, recent updates to Python and some of the newer libraries definitely make it a viable option for concurrent work, though. At any rate, looking for a more elegant approach to solving the concurrency problem, I found Go. I immediately fell in love with the simplicity of the language. There were some trade-offs having come from a dynamically typed language to a statically typed one, but I solved most of the problems by rethinking about software design in general. Go doesn't try to make itself big and feature-heavy, and it does so with purpose. You can build more with less. It forces idioms, which make reading code far less cumbersome. There typically is one agreed-upon way of doing things. Moreover, that way is typically very clear. In Go, it's the norm to strive for clarity over cleverness. The Go community is also worth mentioning. The Jedis of the language are more than welcoming and do their best to pave the road to success for newcomers. Having learned a thing or two over the years about how to use Go in the networking domain, and having never lost my passion to teach, I grappled with the idea of putting together a course. When I was introduced to the amazing folks at Code Red, it was a no-brainer. I immediately began putting together this course. It was originally supposed to be five hours, yet I went a little beyond that. I do hope you find this course meaningful and that you learn something along the way. Well, that is a little about the professional me and what led to the making of this course. In the next video, we'll take a look at what we're going to build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.